Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. How are we all doing today? We're doing something a little bit different, and I think it's going to be lots and lots of fun. I've got this brand new finding just here. Maybe I'll put my hand in front so we can see it. Hopefully it'll pop into focus. There we go. They're called necklace bibs. So they're really popular in jewellery at the moment, obviously for your pendant style jewellery. But I decided that I would try and come up with some really fun, maybe even quirky ways of using them to create different styles of jewellery. Obviously, I've already made a few little pieces that are going to be using a few other findings as well. Uh, there's other sorts of chandelier style of findings, like these little pieces just here as well that I've got. Can See if I can hold that. There we go. Hopefully that'll get in focus. Yeah, lots of these sorts of little pieces that I've got that I'm going to do all sorts of fun things with. So we're going to play around with designing. Uh, if you guys want to comment in with any suggestions, I'm more than willing to accept any ideas you might have. We can create together. We can design together. I'm going to be using lots and lots of 3 mil check glass beads as well. I'm going to use some seed beads too. Um, I'm going to, yeah, more or less just play with a whole variety of different things, which if you want to get the things which I'm going to be using today, uh, there's a little link down there in the description. If you just click on that one, it will take you to where you can find all of them. Uh, and we have some really good sales on as well. So uh, I'll just pop one up on the screen if I can find it. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, we're doing 20 assorted strands of the 3 mil check glass at 20% off. So uh, 20 strands, 24 pl uh, pounds. We did something very, very similar with our pinch beads and they absolutely flew out the door and you guys said, please give us more. We want more things like that. We really enjoyed it. We really liked it. Plus it was a m fantastic way to save up on beads. So we've done that again with our 3 mil check glass and all of the different findings that I'm going to be using today. There's also another bundle. Again, it's 20% off but you can add to that one if you want you can add extras so it's got a little bit of everything I'm going to be using today but if you want to get more of them you can just add them in if you like uh, so yeah like I said the main aim of today's little demonstration uh, which if you've only just joined us like Sandy who's just commented in uh, I'm going to be making all sorts of fun things using some fun findings. So these sorts of things like this, this one, uh, I've got little chandelier -y pieces like this one here. Uh, I've also got these ones uh, like this. This is another example of one that we've already sort of made. But I'm going to be, like I said, using some interesting beads, some interesting findings, all sorts. So I'll show you the sorts of things that I've made already. Uh, and then from there, we can sort of try and play around, have a bit of fun. Uh, I'm going to be using quite a lot uh, my tools in this little demonstration today. So like I said, they are already, of already it's easy to know that these are perfect for doing hanging style jewellery that's like really, really popular at the moment. In fact, I'll show you it uh, with my face just here. Like for example, this little style of necklace is great as well. So see that just there, uh, we've got, uh, there's that style. See, look, if you wanted to make a little hanging necklace like this, they're perfect for that. But I'm going to try and get creative and use it in other ways as well. So yeah, if we just pop back down, there you go. You can see this is uh, the the one that I was just showing you there. There's other ones as well, which I'm going to be using some fantastic crystal beads as well, which you can see them hanging from the bottom of this little set just here with these triangle jump rings. I'm going to show you all of this sort of stuff, but I've got some really fun tips. And then, like I said, we'll design together, we'll create together. There's lots that we can do to sort of play around with this with this little particular set of findings that we've got. Um, I'll show you the different things that I have to play with. So I'll just move a few bits out of the way so that if you want to get all of the different findings that I'm using today, like I said, you'll get 20% off. Uh, I've got some Tiger Tail jewelry wire here. 
uh, you know, the 0.3 thickness that we always use. I'm going to be using that one, which means I also have some crimps. I've got two millimeter crimps just here. Uh, I'm hoping I've got some three millimeter crimps just here. I don't know if I do. Uh, maybe I've got the wrong color, possibly. Uh, let's see yet. Yeah, some three millimeter crimp covers as well. Uh, I've got some of those really lovely little chandeliers, which look like this. So see that where you can dangle from the top in the center. Wait, I'll show you it like this. It's better this way, isn't it? Uh, so here you go. You can dangle things like this on the inside and use it as this little piece just here, which makes a really nice pendant, or you could do it as earrings. That's another finding that I've got. That's what these are. Um, what else have I got here? I've got obviously my little necklace pieces that I'm going to be demonstrating predominantly with, these ones just here. Um, I've also got lobster clasps for doing like bracelets and necklaces and whatnot. I've got some side collots in here, which I will be using with the silver ball chain, which is this material here. I've also got some little closed jump rings that are soldered. I've got some 4mm jump rings as well, which open, of course. I've got some triangle jump rings, which are really, really useful for hanging things, dangling them. So see them? They're in the shape of little triangles, but they're jump rings. So they're super cool, super fun to use. Uh, I've got some earring backs as well, which I've got little stud pieces, which I'll show you those in a second too. I've got some ball chain clasps. We're almost there at the end. You'll get all of these if you get the bundle, by the way, which is 20% off. Um, so there's also these little chandeliers that you get as well. And then you've got your head pins and some artistic wire as well. So 0.4 millimeter artistic wire. Those are all of the things that I'm going to be using today. Uh, of course, if you want to have a look at them all and see more, get more information about each of them, uh, just follow the little link in the description there that tells you uh, more or less how to use them. Um, so let's just see who we've got with us already. Uh, what's going on? Oh no, my mouse appears to have died. Ugh. I've run out of battery, have I? Uh-oh, this is this is bad timing, isn't it? Uh, is my mouse going to live? I think I'm out of battery. Uh, hopefully I can charge that while I'm while I'm working here. Uh, I'm I'm out of battery, so I need a, a cable to plug in. Oh well, luckily I can still fade between the uh Take that and that Thank you. No, no, I need a cable. It doesn't have a battery in it. I have to plug it in. I think the cable's here somewhere. But anyway, luckily I can... I might not be able to click on people's comments and show them, but I can still uh, zoom in and do all of those sorts of things easily enough. Uh, but yeah, I can't see who's... I can't see... Oh, wait, no, it's back. For some reason, all of a sudden it's back. I don't know what's going on. I turned it off and on, and now it's back again. Great. Um, so we have... Who have we got? Jan was here. She said she wasn't able to stay, but uh, she was looking forward to watching it in catch-up. Uh, but she's got a hosting, she's hosting a workshop this weekend. So obviously that's why she can't join us. But she said, best of luck to me. So thanks. Uh, thanks, Jan. Um, Nancy is here. We've got Isla as well. Uh, she says, hello from Lancashire. Uh, Bindi is here. We've got Stacy Bailiff. She says, hello all. She's over on YouTube because I'm live both on YouTube and Facebook. Sandy is here. Uh, Eugenia is here. She says, Thank God it's Friday. Uh, and I remembered. Yes. Uh, hello and glad to be here. We've got Azra here as well. Um, we've got Monica. We've got Kaylee. Jackie's here uh, as well. So, um, yeah, hopefully all will go smoothly. Now that the mouse seems to be working again, I should be able to continue all with no problems. So anyway, yeah, like I said, this is the, the main finding I'm going to use. I've also got some others that I'll be using. So this one here, and I'll show you some fun stuff that we can do with this finding here as well, which I'll open the packet. Um, I've got some really beautiful beads that I'm going to be using as well. So I'll show you the uh, three mil check glass. Here's this other little chandelier style finding just here, which is a really nice square shaped diamond, perfect for pendants or earrings, whichever you prefer. Um, but 
I'm also going to use some really, really gorgeous little crystals that we've got. I'm going to use some three mil check glass, of course, because we're doing our bundle. Uh, but yeah, if we have a look, I've got these gorgeous little crystal drops. Look how absolutely sparkly they are. Andrew is just in the process of getting them up onto the website, so they will be up and available very, very shortly if you want to get some of these, but I'll show you how we can use them. I'm going to use some creative techniques. So rather than just using head pins and stringing and stuff like that, I'm going to try and do things a little bit more creatively. That's the whole point of today is doing uh, sort of interesting and different things, sort of changing the way that you, you think about how you'll use things. Uh, that's the plan for today. Um, I'll just show you very quickly as well some of these 3 mil check glass, which, like I said, our big bundle today is using these. There's 20 strands. You'll get assorted colors. So here's a selection and an example of what you'll get. Uh, 20 different colors in there uh, that you can... Um, get as one big bundle at 20% off. So you can see they're gorgeous fire polished three mil check glass uh, that I'll be using just here. Uh, and so that's what we've got as our lovely big bundle. So anyway, if you want to get some three mil check glass, check out the link and we'll have a look at that as well. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, oh, this is a, a nice color as well. In case you didn't know, we've got 170 colors of the three mil check glass on the website. Uh, they're one pound fifty each. Unless you're getting the big bundle, then you save yourself six pounds, and so they they work out at a pound twenty each. So yeah, uh, good savings on those. But yeah, really really high quality. So first things first. Um, of course, I'll show you some really easy basic things. Which if you don't know, if you're new to jewelry making, these are sort of your tried and tested little. Um, uh, techniques that you would use in jewelry making for beaded jewelry. So I'm going to show you some of those sorts of things just because they're really easy to, to learn and they're a good foundation place to start. So of course I've got some tools. So I've got some round nose tire, uh, pliers just here which um, I'll be using to make loops and whatnot. I've got two different styles of pliers. So these ones are called chain nose pliers where they've got a lovely flat surface on the inside and they come to a nice point. And then these ones here are called bent nose pliers. I wonder why, I've got no idea. Uh, these ones just here, which again, they are nice and flat on the inside and then they've got a slight kink in them, which helps sort of getting around the bend. It sort of allows you to take the strain off your wrist a bit in some cases. And then lastly, of course, I've got some cutters. So yeah, I'll start with the basics and then we'll sort of move on to using some basic materials like the ones I showed you uh, in really creative and fun and different ways. So uh, first things first, um, we've got some head pins. So I'll just show you the basics of if you wanted to attach things onto these using head pins. So more or less the techniques that you would use to create a little something like this just here. So see this one? Uh, it's a lovely little design. I'll put it on my hand actually. Uh, it's just graduating lengths on little ball head pins. So you can see they've got their teeny weeny little ball pieces at the bottom, which I need to just... Uh, why is it not so bright? There we go. Have I made that too bright? Just trying to get my camera right. Uh, I don't know. Oh, did I forget to press a button? Aha, there we go. I was wondering why it didn't look so good. There we go. That's the camera all fixed now. And so, yeah, you can see this is the little head pins just here and they've got these gorgeous little ball pin pieces at the bottom there as well so um if i just there we go let's just get the brightness sitting just right there we go so yeah i'll show you how to make one of these they're really quick they're really easy they're really simple uh, and then you just sort of continue on like that so the first thing i'll do i'm going to grab myself some three mil check glass pop my findings out of the way. I've got lots and lots of findings I can play with. But like I said, we're going to start with these jump ring, uh, sorry, the the um, head pins. And I'll use some little seed beads as well. I might go with, 
I think I'll use this color. What do we think about this one? It's uh, a nice sort of silvery tone that I've got here, uh, which if I just pour them out, actually I'll pour them on my hand, they are gorgeous little beads because on one side they're clear, sort of silver looking, and then on the other side they've got this really rich green sort of surface uh, in a uh, like that that reflects all of the light and just looks absolutely stunning. So anyway, those, I'm going to use some of them, I think. And then I'll use some little seed beads as well. Uh, let's see, maybe I'll go with, shall I go, I don't know, what do you reckon? Silver? Like a bluey silver? Maybe a purple? Maybe a slightly lighter purple colour? What do we think? Which one do we like? Maybe I'll go with the, let's go with the silver, shall we? I think they'll work nicely together. So, um, Let's just pop that down. There we go. So yeah, I'll just show you. It's really quick. It's really easy. Obviously, you can pop colors out by using other different colors as well, if you like. So for example, if I wanted to, I could pop in some of these really nice coppery color ones as well that have that same rainbow surface on them as well. But it's it's just a matter of playing, trying things out, doing whatever it is that takes your fancy, uh, you know, Bob Ross style, like he says. Hmm. Any design ideas you have, by the way, any creative ideas you might have for these findings, comment them in. Let me know, um, and I will. I'll see if I can. I can do that sort of thing for you. I can show you these these ideas. So anyway. Uh, to make this little thing, all you'd have to do to essentially match the same as this one which I've got just here, uh, I just need to put them straight onto that little head pin. So you just thread them straight on directly onto this head pin. So like for example this one here, uh, I'll go with a, the little ball is part of the head pin, so then I'll go a check glass, a seed bead, a check glass, a seed bead, a check glass, a seed bead, that sort of thing. So like I said, let's start with one of our check glass here. We'll separate them with seed beads. You can do any design that you like on this. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. This is just something that I uh, think looks really nice and sort of played with already. So if we were going to make a long, uh, a, a fairly small one, you can see the maximum size that you can make with your little head pin is something about this size because we need to use this little section to create the loop at the top so we can connect. So I'll just make a relatively short one, I think. Just like this, and I'll finish it off with a little seed bead there, and I think that will do me. I'm going to turn this into my first little head pin piece. So like I said, this is just the, the basicest basic basic of design techniques that we've got here that I will sort of show you to give us our foundation. Um, lots and lots of people joining in, which is fantastic. Uh, welcome to those of you who've only just popped in. Uh, it's lovely to see you. Um, let me see, what will I just put up? So, uh, if you, here we go, if you haven't done so already, uh, make sure you hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe to our channel. We do lots and lots of live videos each week, but then we've got plenty of pre-recorded videos as well, if you rather just get straight into the action. You're not here for the chit-chat, you're just here for the jewellery. Uh, we've got plenty on our YouTube channel you can subscribe to as well. Uh, but yeah, so now that I've got this little piece just here, I've bent it at like a 90 degree angle. This will give me the ability to roll it into a little pin. So I don't need the entirety of this little section. I only need enough to make myself a small little loop. So I'll just bring in my cutters here and I'm going to give this a little snip around about an, a centimeter or half an inch from where I've bent it. So I'll just cut that one just there. It's always good to cover your your hands when you're doing that, uh, just to make sure that your little uh, little metal pieces don't fling out and hit you in the eye or anything like that. That's you know the dangerous end of the um, of the loop uh, of of using them. There's a good suggestion here from Kaylee, which I'm going to read while I do this little loop section. Uh, so here we go. With my little piece bent like this at a 90 degree, I can now turn this section into a loop. So I'll hold the pliers 
like this. If you see, I'm going to hold them sort of upside down. It looks really, really awkward when I'm holding it like this, just at this very moment. So, but by holding it this way, it means that when I need to rotate, I can get a full rotation out of my wrist. So I'll hold it like this, and then I can rotate the whole way around uh, really, really quickly, really, really easily as well. So on that little bend, we need to grab the very, very tip. So if you haven't used these round nose pliers before, if you use this tip section down here, you'll get a really small loop. And if you use the section down here, you'll get a really big loop. So these are graduated in size so that you can choose the size of your inner loop. Um, hi to Seema, by the way, who's just joined us. Thanks for popping by. Lovely to see you. So anyway, because I want a relatively small loop, I'm going to use it around about here. So now I'll make sure it's at 90 degrees just there. So my tool and my little head pin are at like a, a right angle corner. So I'll just now do that motion and I'll do my full turn in just one go. See that? And there you go. Because I did it with the tool like that, it's pretty much all the way bent over already in just one go. And now it just needs some fine adjustments. I don't have to do a whole lot more to get it really neat. Obviously, I can spend a little bit more time if I want to, uh, to just get it a little bit neater, a little bit cleaner. You can roll it a little further if you want to as well, just so that it closes over really nicely. Once you've got this little eye uh, created at the top, uh, we're ready to open this up and then we can attach it to our little necklace piece just here. So you can see there's loads of little loops just here that you, we can connect to. So if you wanted this to be, for example, your smallest one, you would put it there. If you wanted it to be your longest one, because there's nine gaps, you can have one right in the center that's the longest, but it's entirely up to you as per how you will um, choose to to do that. So essentially with my little pliers just here, I'm going to open up my little eye that I've created. So we don't want to open it back the way it came. We want to open it sideways instead. So if this is the the where the, the, the two joins of our metal come together, I want to slide it downwards like that. So um, let me just twist that one side and you can see I've now got it open like so. So see that? See how I've opened it slightly sideways? This gives me an area with which I can now slide things on. So see that? It's just opened sideways. So if you rotate it enough, it still looks like it's closed, but from the other direction you can see it's just out of alignment slightly. So then you just hook it on to your little finding at the exact point where you want it. So if I wanted this to be my absolute longest one, I'd put it smack bang there in the center. And now I'll just use those pliers and return it back to that neutral position. So just twist that back around. I go ever so slightly beyond where you want it to go, just the tiniest, tiniest little bit, and then it will pop back into position um, to where you want it. So there you go. You can see this is the simple, easy, basic, most beginning style version of using this little finding. The easiest way, the way that jumps out as being the one that makes the most sense. But what if we want to get creative with it? I've just seen that we've got a question uh, here from Azra just about check glass beads in general. Um, here we go. Let me see if I can see it all. Here we go. A uh, general question about check glass. It, uh, is it used for fire polish beads, rondelles and donuts, round faceted beads, rondelles are the smallest, three by four, blah, 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 where faceted round beads range from and power. So the different the difference between those, the donut ones, the, the fire polishing is if we have a quick little look, you can see there's all these flat little surfaces that are, are like facets, they're called, little cuts in the glass to give it a flat surface, which gives the um, 
the light somewhere to bounce directly off of. So you can see in there, there's loads of them. I'll see how zoomed in it will go before it dies. But yeah, see that little bead there where it's got loads of little flat surfaces. There's a flat surface, there's a flat surface. And as you just roll them over, you can see all the flat surfaces. That's what fire polishing is called. That's all of these flat surfaces so that when you are looking at it, you can see all the different the light shining off that flat surface to make it look shinier. So that's what fire polished means. So you can also get your 3x4 rondelle versions. They also have that fire polishing shape. But in this instance, the Czech glass ones, they're called 3mm because they were 3 real, three millimeter round beads, but then they've been faceted to have that fire polished flat surfaces. So that's the, the difference that between, like maybe, hopefully that explains, but then generally the rest of the information is just on the size of it. So 6x4 means it's 4 from hole to hole and 6 beads wide, where with these fire polished ones like this, it's just a round that's got the fat. Uh, the flat faces. Hopefully that answers the question, and if anyone else was wondering why, now you know, hopefully. So, um, I've uh, a little something that I think you might find interesting is what do you do if you wanted to make a dangly piece like this, but you want it to be way longer? So if you wanted to have a dangly piece that was really, really, really long, for example, um, it's uh, it's really, really easy to give yourself a, a piece that you can make that's significantly longer than what you can make with a, um, with a, with a head pin. So I'm going to show you how exactly. It's sort of the creative way. It's something I was thinking about and was going, do you know what? What, what would be a really good way to make really long sort of dangly pieces that you could hang? So if you're the sort of person who likes really long dangly bits, um, uh, really long dangly tassels, uh, I'll show you how you can do something like that and you're not restricted by the size of a head pin. So I'll just take this one off so that you can, or I'll move it slightly so that we can sort of, pos I'll show you the difference between the two. So if we said all of a sudden we want this one to become our smallest little piece. Just pop that back in there now. There we go. So you, they're easy enough to move, aren't they? So there we are. Now I've got it on the end. Let's just say I wanted to have one that's a really, really, really long one, right down the center. So this is a little clever thing I was thinking about yesterday on how I could sort of do that. And I think you might like it. So this is this is where we start getting creative by by getting similar looking things, but doing them in creative ways. So I'll show you two different versions of this. One that's a slightly more simplified version. One that's a little bit more complex. So the first thing that we're going to do is grab a bit of some tiger tail jewelry wire. What? What is he doing with tiger tail, you're saying? I hear you say at home. Well, I'm going to use this to uh, as like a, a faux head pin. How's he going to do that? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to just use myself. If you want to have a really, really long, long, long tassel, like a massive one if you wanted to, it would be really easy. You just make yourself a piece of the tiger tail that's approximately a little bit more than double the size that you want. If you make it even a little bit extra, you don't need to be too worried about using all of your tiger tail up. There's plenty of it uh, in a in a in a a little spool. You get if you get our findings bundle, for example, you get ten meters of the stuff. Ten meters, which is loads. So anyway, what I'm going to do is bring the two ends of this together, and I'm going to thread it onto the one that I want to attach it to. So this one, it's pretty much permanent. So you do need to be careful uh, when it comes to deciding which one you want to be the uh, where you're going to start working. So I'll work on this one that's just beside, just here. And I'll make myself my next little piece, but I'm going to make a really long one. It's going to be way longer than this little piece just here. So I've got it in here. I'll now bring my two ends 
together like so see that bring them together and I'm gonna make myself a little tiger tail version of a head pin so keeping them together I'll just slide that down and that's gonna create the start of a kink towards the bottom of our little piece just here so bring these two pieces together and now I'll show you I'm gonna do one this one can be just I mean, well, I don't know. What do, what do I want to put on it? You can put anything you want. So I'm going to do just seed beads for now, I think. Or maybe I'll do some of each. Just slide them all the way down to the end of your work. And you can see it will sort of create that little loop nice and close to your little piece just here on your... Uh, you, on your little end there. Some of the findings, Eugenie has just asked, are some of the, uh, the findings in bronze or copper? We have some. You just have to have a look on the website. Uh, the ones that I've got, because I've got a full matching set, uh, my little necklace bib piece being silver, I've sort of made the, the matching set based on that. So I don't have the, the necklace bib in the other colours, uh, but a lot of the other findings I do. So, um, for example, like lobsters and... Uh, you know, the, the head pins and the ear wires, all sorts. They come in lots and lots of different colours, which you can find them all on our website quite easily, uh, which that was a question there from Eugenia. Uh, so thanks, Eugenia, for that one. Uh, I always wondered why it's called Tiger Tail. It's a strange name for it, says Kaylee. Do you know what? I have no idea either. That's something that's, something that's a, an interesting thought. Um, I don't know, someone... Do a quick Google search and find out, and then we can I can pop the comment up and we can all find out why is it called Tiger Tail? I don't know, but essentially what Tiger Tail is, if you haven't seen it before, it's lots and lots of strands, very, very, very fine strands of stainless steel wire that are then coiled all around each other into they're, they're like braided together to make it super duper strong, and then they're coated with a clear nylon so that uh, it's sort of like it's it feels smooth, it feels soft, but then you've got the strength of your stainless steel, plus it also sort of keeps it all together so you don't have to worry about it all coming apart or anything like that. So um, that's sort of what Tiger Tail is. Of course, it does come in varying qualities. We make sure that we've got a really good high quality one so that it's kink resistant so that if you don't want it to kink it's not going to if you know what I mean so anyway I'll just add on my last little bead here and I might do a couple of seed beads and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this into my super long super dangly little um little tassel piece here so we pop these few th on keep on going slide them down. I tell you, we're, we're, we're starting off real simple, real basic at the moment, but things are going to go cray-cray soon. You're going to, you know, there's some creative ideas that we've put our heads together to think about how we can use these, and we're looking forward to, I'm um, looking forward to showing you guys. So anyway, if I, if I wanted to, see, look, if I could just keep going if I wanted to, I could keep going until it's all the way down here. Uh, and then you've got a really, really long tassel if you wanted to. But for the sake of time, I'm going to continue now. So I'll grab myself some of my little crimp beads. You get plenty of them. These ones are nice and small. They're only two millimeters. So that's also going to have a little advantage that you'll soon see in a second. So I'll thread both little beads, uh, both threads through that tiny little crimp. And now if I just zoom in a teeny weeny bit, I'll slide it down so that these are nice and close to my my end here and my crimp is going to be just there as well. I'll just loosen it the tiniest, tiniest amount. That's going to mean that it will move here, but I'll also have space to cover this and make it look like a bead. So I'll just bring in my standard pair of pliers just here and with it being fairly tight but not fully tight, I'll just come in with those pliers. This is why they need to be flat on the inside. And I'm going to just give them a good old fashioned squeeze. So it goes nice and flat like that just there. So hopefully you can see, wait, if I just 
bring it a little closer. You can see just here at the end, see it's this little flat funny thing. Obviously we don't want to see it looking like that, so we're going to cover it with what looks like a little flat bead. So um, uh, if, why, if I want to do that, all I have to do now is grab myself out some of those 3mm crimp covers. So if you've never seen a crimp cover before, they're also very, very useful when it comes to using Tiger Tail. You can hide your work and uh, sort of hide it all and make it look really professionally finished in a super quick and easy way. So a 3mm uh, crimp cover looks like this little horseshoe piece just here. So if you uh, haven't seen them before, essentially they they were little round balls that have had a chunk of them cut out so that you can squeeze it down to be the size that you need. So in this case, it's gonna become a three millimeter bead. Um, so if I just pop that down there, I will Bring it, I'll just sit it on my bead mat. Again, if you're not touching it, it's not moving. It's much easier to work with if you're not the one holding it in position. So I'll just pop my wires inside there so that my crimp cover is sitting nicely inside of my three millimeter crimp. Just get it popped inside because this is why as well we wanted it, oops, just a bit sideways there. This is also why we wanted it to be uh, having a little extra space is so that there's space for the crimp cover to just slide over. There we go. So you can see now, wait, if it'll come in focus for me. There we go. It just sits over the top of that little crimp there. So if you, I, I do recommend that you do this all on the table, but I'm holding it so it's easier for you to see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. You just bring in those same flat pliers and you give it a little squeeze. Just close that little hole up, get it nice and filled, and just squeeze it down, 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 until eventually you'll see it closes up, but not all the way. You can still see just here. You can still sort of see it inside. But the great thing is, all we have to do is now squeeze it sort of in towards the center. So now what we what we did the first time was sort of squash it this way. And now what we have to do is sort of squash it in the opposite side of direction so that it will become rounder. So just using my same little pliers now, I'll just squeeze the hole, like the size of the hole, towards the center so that it becomes more rounded in shape. I'll just zoom out so that it's gonna be a better focus. We don't want it to be too out of focus. The bead mat always seems to want to focus on the bead mat. So anyway, there we go. Just squeeze that down and that will make the little thing sit inside, closes it up perfectly. And then it looks like, here we go, there's, if I hold it up to you, there's the join, which it's a little bit messy. I can spend a bit more time cleaning it up, but I mean, you'd only see that if you were as close as you are now. If you look at it from down here, it just looks like a nice little three millimeter bead. So it's a really clean finished way to do it. Now all I have to do, because my crimp is super secure there in the bottom, all I have to do is just bring in my cutters and cut off that little bit of excess wire. Just there at the bottom. There we go. And then ta-da, it looks like you've got a head pin. Da -da -da -da. So there you go. It looks exactly like you've got a head pin, but in fact, you can make it as long as you want. It's got tiger tail jewelry wire in there, and you can see it's a lot more supple than using head pins as well. So if you want it, it's almost like using thread, but significantly stronger. So it's a really, really uh, nice, fun, simple, easy way of making infinite size head pins. I, I couldn't resist. I had to say it like that. Um, yeah, we've got lots of people who are just turning up now. Uh, lovely of you to join. So anyway, that's just sort of the basics. Now I'm gonna show you some slightly more interesting things that you can do um, as well if you wanted to. Uh, actually, I'll do this very, very quickly. This is a second way to do a little tiger tail hangery type thing. 
is if we grab a little bit more of my tiger tail, I'll just make a very short one here, uh, which I'll do as my opposite end, but I'm going to use one of those crystal drop pieces. Actually, that's not long enough. Um, I'll use my tiger tail. Where are you, Mr. Tiger Tail? Here we go. Grab myself out a piece of tiger tail. And this is how you can do a head pin, but you can hang things from the bottom of it. So there's two different ways that you can do it. So if I do the same thing again, I've cut myself a nice piece just here. I'll thread, in fact, I might just cut this little bit off. You can see if ever you've got a little piece where it bends or anything like this, uh, just here, you can just get your cutters and give it a little snip. There we go, and now it's nice and clean. Thread through here all the way down, and this time it's going to be ever so slightly different. I'm not going to do it completely like this. I'm going to slide it so that it will be holding my drop at just one side. So first things first, let's grab one of those gorgeous little crystal beads. So if you haven't seen these before, these are the ones that hopefully Andrew is getting onto the website right now. Um, they're these little chandelier drops. They should be there in that product category soon if they're not there just yet. Don't worry, they are coming. They are absolutely gorgeous, these little beads. I really love them. Uh, but you can see they've got so many facets, so they really catch the light and they just look spectacular. Anyway, uh, I'll use one of those just here. Again, if you want, there's two ways that you can use these. I'll just show you one of them for now. Uh, so you look, there's uh, there's what it looks like on one side. It looks all purpley and violets. And then on the other side, you've got that metallic green surface. So they're really cool. Uh, so yeah, I'll thread one of my ends. I don't, it doesn't need to be on the, on this piece yet. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But essentially what I'm going to do is just crimp this little fella to the bottom. So down through it, I'll just pass straight through it with the tiger tail and get it pulled through, just sort of neat, something that's easy to work with. See like this, so it's at the bottom. And now using one of my little crimp beads, I'll just thread that crimp bead down and over both wires. See that? It's over the top of both wires. I can slide it down. I'll leave a little bit of space again so it can move. See like this here? And that's going to work as a little hanger. Look at that. Doesn't it look good? So now I'll just use my pliers, like I said, and give that little piece a good old squeeze like that there. Get it really firm so it's not going to come undone. And there you go. There's that little piece just there. I'll thread on a couple of beads. So I'll just go, yeah, whatever, a couple of um, my, head, uh, my little pieces there. That'll help to hold my two wires together and I'll just add another crimp cover on to this little piece, cover this little bit. I'll do it really quickly so that it's not taking too long. Clearly, I, I mean, I don't have to show you the crimp cover, but let's go through it just real quick once more. Perfectionist Matthew says we have to crimp cover it. So now I'll just once again pop my little crimp over the top of that little piece just there. If you rest it down on the bead mat, it doesn't move. It's really easy. You can just now bring in your pliers, give it a gentle squeeze, only gently. You don't want to over squeeze your crimp cover. There we go. So you want it to be like this so that it looks open still. So see that? You can still sort of see the little crimp in his little crimp covery mouth. So now I will just Squeeze that nice and flat into a ball shape. There you go. And there's that nice little crimp cover done as a ball, and it's holding that little piece perfectly in place there now. So there you can see I've got that nice little drop, and this is the part where I can thread a few more beads. Let's just do it really quickly. Like so. I don't need this piece to be as long as it is, so I'll just thread these ones over here. And 
I'll cut this little excess piece off. I don't need this little tail anymore. I'll cut it a little bit shorter, but I won't cut it all the way just yet. So just bring in the cutters and give that a little cut just there. And now I'll be able to get rid of it again in a minute, but essentially what I can do now is attach it to my little top section. So once I've got, if I only want to have a very small little dangle, you add on all the beads that you want to have. In fact, I'll add a few more. I'll add a, a check glass as well. And there may be a few more of these little seed beads here. Couple more. And now finally, to finish it off, we pick up one little crimp bead. Slide it all the way down. And thread through this one. So I'll just stick this one, I don't know, wherever. Let's put it here on this end, shall we? So I'll thread through here now. All the way down, nice and tight. And now I'll thread through this little crimp bead again. So through the crimp and down into a few of the seed beads. It doesn't matter how many it goes through. It can just keep going until it sort of pops out. There you go. Pops out about here. So I can get this now fairly tight. So just hold that. You can almost pull against this to get this side tight. And now I'll just use this little piece just here to Pull, 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 pull. Again, if you watched my tutorial last week, or maybe it was the week before when I did the um, the Saint Tropez, which is still on sale, by the way. If you want to get the Saint Tropez, um, you don't have too much longer left to get it on discount. So I'll hold this just here. So holding that little piece of wire with my round nose pliers, it locks everything in place just where I want it. And I can pull now and not have to worry too much about it sliding. There we go, just give it a nice little tug. And there you go. So there, it now will hold that one in position. And I can loosen it down a little. Squeeze this little crimp. Just give it a bit more space so that I can fit my crimp cover. There we go, give that a nice squeeze. And one last time, grabbing a crimp cover, which I've misplaced, here it is. You would just pop another crimp cover on here. I won't bother showing you it because we'll just move on. Uh, but yeah, stick a crimp cover on there, and then you have another lovely little dangly um, piece just there with a nice dangly bead at the bottom, and it looks really neat and really clean. You just have to cut off your excess wire that you don't need anymore. Cut that bit off. Cut this bit off. What do you think about my uh, my magic tiger tail head pins? Do you like them? There you go. Look at that. You can you can add a crimp cover if you want. You don't have to. It's entirely up to you. So there you go. These are just the basic ways that we can use it. But I'm going to show you some more creative, fun ones. So these are on the bracelet. This is for doing the pendant style. But let's get creative now, and I'll show you how you can use it for an earring. That's right. You heard me. It could be an earring, or I mean, you could do it as an anklet as well if you wanted to, but that's more or less the same as, as if it were a bracelet. You could sort of just uh, maybe use cord or the ball chain that we've given you to go around here to connect it into a nice little anklet. Obviously, you wouldn't want to have such long dangly bits as that one. Uh, you could just make little small ones. Uh, but otherwise, let me show you how it can be used as an earring. This is a really fun idea. The first one, which uh, I'm going to use some more of those crystally droppy bits, and I'm going to use um, something really interesting that you also get as part of your kit. So, there we go. See it here? Looks like a bracelet a necklace piece. I mean, you could do it as a bracelet piece if you wanted to as well. Sits nicely enough. But how will it look as an earring? So, this was a really, really fun concept that Jermaine came up with. And we're going to be using our artistic wire now. So this is this stuff here, 0 0.4 millimeter, which I think is 26 gauge uh, jewelry, uh, artistic wire. So I'll just grab myself some of that. I only need, oh, I don't know, 
50 centimeters, maybe a little bit more, maybe a meter, just whatever's comfy for you to use. It doesn't matter too much. Um, just as long as you have at least enough, that's the important part. You don't want to have not enough. It's better to have too much than not enough. So anyway, what I'm going to do with this is turn it into an earring. But what I think I'll do, which this is Jermaine's idea, I've got one sitting here ready, but I'm not going to reveal the surprise just yet, is that you could have it hanging like this. See? See how it looks really nice like this? But obviously, I'm sure you're thinking, do you really want dangly things from this side? No, you don't. And you don't have to. Ready? And then we can drop something from the bottom. So let me show you how exactly we're going to do that. So with my artistic wire, which I have just here, I'm going to straighten it out. It's always good to sort of age your wire a little just by stretching it, giving it a little a little bit of a rub down, a bit of love, give it some massage, get it nice and smooth. I've completely forgot to have my tea, of course. I've got my Matthew mug though, very important. Ah, lovely big sip. Um, so now what I'll do is I'm going to attach my wire to this little piece here because I'm going to wire wrap onto this. So here we go. First things first, we pass through this little piece just here. Just You just leave yourself a tail. It doesn't matter too much how much of a tail. Um, ah, here we go. Susan Smith says, could you let me know what seed beads you're using? I find it hard, I'm finding it hard to find nice silver ones. Um, so on our website, uh, have a look, it's PSB10 18313, or is it 131? I don't know, I'd have to check, but I think it's 160 something, 168 on our website. But otherwise, just have a look on our website. We've got loads and loads of Preciosa size 10 seed beads. Uh, I'm using the size 10, they're the same size as Japanese size 11. They're Czech, these ones. Uh, everything I'm using is from the Czech Republic, pretty much. So yeah. I've just bent this over like this, and I can now start wrapping, as it were. Yo, yo, no. Terrible joke. I apologize. Uh, so there we go. You just start attaching that there. I'll take the end through here again, like so. And you want to try and keep this as large as you can until it's all the way in. That way, you get a really clean finish. So just feed it through. And then when it's nice and close, give it a nice firm tug to get that little piece to close down nice and small onto your wire. You want it to be super firm. So now I'll bend it over again. I'll take it all the way through here once more. Try and keep it in focus for you. There we go. Just push it down a little. We only have to go through this a couple of times. Pull through, not all the way though, because we don't want it to get loose just yet. So we want to sort of l bend it into this sort of direction so that as we pull, it's going to want to come that way already. And now give it a nice firm yank and wrap around. Do it again. Do it just one last time to show you. Just nice again. Do it this way. Pull in this direction away from where we're going and keep don't let it twist see it nearly twisted there pull it all the way through and give it a nice firm tug to go through and wrap it over and then if they're not quite sitting bunched down together just bunch it down like that there we go and that's going to secure our thread on nice and tight like that there um, I'll just zoom out now because we don't need to see it as tight as that. This little piece here, uh, if you want, you can just pop it through to the back and cut it off whenever you want. Maybe use a pair of pliers and just pull it off. We don't need it anymore. Just get it nice and tight in there. And then I'll cut it off so it's not in my way. Where have I put my cutters? Here they are. So... Give that a snip again, safety first, cover it with your fingers so you don't pop yourself in the eyeball or anything. Pop that there. And now, ready? This is where things are going to get looking good. This is where it's going to start looking really nice. So, 
<clears throat> I'll just grab myself some, I'll use maybe this color here so that it will match my other one that you haven't seen yet. Grab out some three mil check glass, get these cutters out of the way. And I'm gonna do kind of a half hitch knot almost around my, my little piece just here. So see this, let's now go over the top. Wait, I'll just actually, before I do that, I'm gonna bring myself down to the bottom. I just remembered I need to be closer to the bottom. Come on now. So we're looping it round so it's nice and firm at the bottom. Get rid of the bends in the wire. There we go. Nice and tight. And now I'm closer to the bottom, which is where I want to be. And I'll add my next little bead. So, <clears throat> pick him up. My little three mil check glass fella here which this one, again, if you want to get our little bundle... Oh, let's get rid of that ticker. We don't want to see that anymore. Uh, there we go. Um, if you're going to grab our little bundle, you get 20% off. So I'll slide that down all the way, and I'm going to do what's essentially like a half hitch knot. So I'm going to go through the back. So I'm going to go over the top of this little gap just here. Over this gap like that, and then through this loop and up, but underneath it. So through here and stay underneath. So see that? It's underneath there. And then as I pull that all the way through, try and get it nice and firm, position your bead, hold it with your finger, and then you can just pull that all the way down, all the way through so that it's nicely sitting in position. And now again, you can see we're in position, ready to add our next bead. So I'll pick up another one. And just the same as before, I'm gonna sit my, I want my wire to sit nicely in this little gap just here. So I'll go over the top. So my wire will go over it like that. And then I'm gonna come through here and I wanna make sure it's underneath. So look. That's gonna go over the top of that one, and this one is now underneath. So as I pull it all the way through, pull it nice and firm, give it a, a final little yank to get it tight. Ta-da! And that's gonna just loop that onto there as well. And then you just continue doing that process over and over and over. Whoops, just thread my little bead down, there we go slide him down and then through that little loop again keep it underneath the wire here so you can see it's over the top of the loop and this one comes underneath all the way through and pull nice and firm and you just keep doing that until you've got all of them done so I won't do them all, obviously. I'll just show you one more, and then we're going to move on. Uh, and then there's a little piece of inspiration I think you're really going to like. This was Maxine's idea, this next little piece of inspiration, which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, it's a really clever little design that she's come up with on how you can use this. This is the most creative way of using this little finding. So here we go. There's these little pieces here. But just before I do that, um, I will attach now, this is a fun little piece of finding usage. These are called triangle jump rings. So, here we are. Open up a pack. Again, it's in the findings bundle. If you want to grab the findings bundle, uh, that's included. You'll get 20% off. Open him up. There's all your little triangle pieces just here. You can see each one is a little triangle, which is perfect for doing like little miniature pendants. So that lends itself perfectly to these little drop pieces. So because I've got my, my little drop just here, I'm gonna hang it from the bottom and then I can attach my earring to the top. So the way that 
uh, I will do that. Obviously, if we have a look, this is too large on top of my my little drop piece. See that? It's a bit too big. So I need to just trim it down a little. So the way I'll do that, again, using my cutters, I'm going to just trim off a little bit from here, but I still want enough that it will poke into my crystal drop there. See that? So I'll leave myself a teeny bit there, cover it for safety, and just chop that little bit off. See that? And I'll do the same on the opposite side. And I'll reposition my little triangle so that it fits much better. So you can see, there we go. Now it's nice and small. I can use a pair of normal pliers and I'm gonna just close it down into the smaller triangle. So see that? Just give that a little squeeze at the, whoops, Trying to do this so that you can see it really carefully without my finger going on. But anyway, um, here we go. Over the top and just use your pliers. You can squeeze them together with your fingers at the beginning, but you will need to use the pliers and I'll show you why. So if you have a look, when you're using your fingers, it doesn't want to go all the way closed just yet. So if you hold these two ends, it's because this loop at the top is just a little bit too large. So we need to just squeeze somewhere in the center so that it will just shrink this little opening at the top. That's all we have to do. And then you'll see, oh no, I dropped my piece. Where did you go? He went flying. I wasn't paying attention. Here, yeah, little jump ring. Ah, good. Ah, oh, good. Whoops. Nearly lost him. He went flying on the floor. You can see it gets much closer to being closed when you've done that. So just squeeze that in a bit more, teeniest bit more. There we go. And now you've got a closed little triangle. See that? So it will be much, much better for doing my drop now. If it's not quite straight anymore at the base, you just use your pliers and just straighten it out. There we go. Now look at that. Perfect. Perfectly straight. So I can open this up like so. Pop my little drop inside here. And then I can squeeze that one closed with my fingers. This bit can be a little fiddly. Oh, wait. <laughs> that would have been silly, wouldn't have it? I need to... Put it on my earring first, don't I? So just thread that on there. That's going to dangle there. And now I can just pop my little drop piece nicely into here. Give that a squeeze down into the hole. And there you go. That will hang that nice little crystal right there from the bottom which once you've got that finished will look like actually I'll show you with my my noggin you attach your little earring finding to the top so there it is I've got a nice little stud piece which they're a bit different and there you go you can see it will sit beautifully like that how do I look I feel like a bit like a pirate all of a sudden with being a bloke with a beard and a dangly earring. Yo ho. <laughs> but yeah, isn't that a really, really simple design, a really clever way of using that little finding to make an earring piece. So uh, there you go. There it is just there as a gorgeous little earring. And then you just make the matching pair, which uh, maybe I should have thought about this in retrospect, but maybe it's better if you have one that's one way and one that's the other way so that they sit. Now, seeing as I've got the two of them sitting like this, it's time to show you Maxine's fantastic epiphany that she had. Why use one when you can use two of them? So see this? Let's just cut this little piece of wire off because then I'll reuse it. I'll show you. This is going to make this little component into something entirely new and entirely different. 
So again, you could use this for a pendant, you could use it for an earring, you could use it for a, um, like a bracelet piece, lots and lots of different ways. But essentially, you can align them so that the two holes are joined together like this, and it will create this fantastic double scalloped finding piece. How cool is this idea? So this was Maxine's idea. She was like, put them together back to back. You know, I could see her little brain going -la 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 -la, as she was coming up with, uh, with fantastic ideas. That's Maxine's forte, Fa great ideas. Hmm. So using my little piece of wire here, I'll start by attaching them. So there's a couple of different ways that you could do this if you wanted to. If I had some larger beads here, which maybe I do actually, yes I do. Ha ha, great, look at that, perfect, just what I need. What you could do in this instance is we'll do the exact same process of wrapping it together, but we'll do it over both holes together. So take my wire through both, and just wrap that, I'll do it a little smaller actually, wrap that over the top here, like so, and now I can wrap this one over as well, so just wrap this over here, and then I'll pass through it again, and we'll just start this one the exact same way as we did on the previous one, so just thread through both little holes here, pull it all the way tight like this, there we go. In fact, I'm even going to wrap around this other little piece just here as well. So let's just bend that over the top and we'll go over it to really lock that in. Doesn't matter too much if they're not quite aligned yet, they will align as we continue. So just through there, over the top again, pull it through, go through again, just try and get it really firm as you go, so through the hole once more, pull, and that will start to do, that will do one side of my design here. There we go. That'll make that side fairly well joined together. But now, I'll do the other side. I'm not going to cut this off yet, because you'll soon see why. Let's just cut off this taily bit, because I don't really need the tail anymore. I can continue tightening this in just a minute, but let's just cut off my little taily section here. I'll clean it off in a bit. Um, hi to Daphne, who's just joined us from Canada, by the way. She says hello from Canada. Lovely to see you. Do you know what? You could... Oh, this is even a fun idea. You can even make your eye pin into a head pin. This is literally something I've only just thought of just now. Uh, grab a head pin. Cut the end of your head pin off. Turn it into a loop attach it to here, and do another one there, and then that will make it into this shape, which kind of looks like a, a Maharaja's gate or something like that. How cool is that idea? That's another idea I've literally just thought of this very second, that you could join these two pieces with a bar, and then you can have beads there, or you could hang from it, you could do whatever you want, but that could look really, really cool as another way of doing a pendant or something. Um, a really big statement earring if you wanted to, something really fancy. You could put a bar there like that. I might, maybe I'll try that. I might try that later. That, this is the fun thing. You can get creative. You can try stuff. You can sort of see what inspires you as you're going. But as I promised, I'm going to do it as the eye shape. So I'll give myself a little bit more wire, which I only need a small piece this time. So here it is. I'll bring these two pieces together. Now this is something that uh, is a, a, a good idea. So if you have a look, see how I've got my wire on this side? We want to create our second connection 
on the opposite corner. That will make it really firm. If they're both on the same side, it will be a bit droopy and it will flop down. But this way, it will stay much, much neater. So, take my wire through, of course. I'll try and keep it on this side this time. And now, just bend this over like that and we can start working in the same way to connect these two sides together so just wrap that there i'll even take this over the top of this wire go through here and pull it tight use your pliers if you need to don't forget and then we'll go through again you just need to go through until it's nice and firm so it doesn't move around too much that's what we want so just position that one there Give it a good old yank to get it through. Pull that one. We'll pull this all the way around so it's nice and firm. Go through there. And pull this one through here. And then again, we'll wrap it round. Go through the gap. Ta-da! Dun, 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 dun. There's the next one. So now, if you have a look, this is why I'm just showing you something that you could do, if you wanted to, is let's cut this little piece off. We don't need the tail of this side either. There we go. But yeah, that massive bead I just showed you. Thread through. Well, thread however many beads you want. Thread more. Thread less, thread more, whatever's, whatever takes your fancy. Obviously, that little piece that, of wire that I just cut, you'll want to clean that back up. But there you go. You can put a little bead like this in between and then grab two more of these little findings and create the next little wraparound piece. So let's just try it out. This is literally, I'm doing this on the fly. I've only just thought of this right now as a potential idea. So hopefully this is going to work out nicely. But if not, I tried. We'll see. So anyway, keep it nice and firm to the base. We want to keep it close to that bead over the top and through those gaps again. Oops. And then just to make sure it's nice and firm, I might use my pliers even which you just bring in those pliers and give it a pull. There we go. And then through here, get it wrapped around slightly more and pull. Obviously you can do this, you can spend more time. I'm, I'm, I'm literally rushing to make this as quickly as I can. You could definitely be doing this neater than I'm doing it right now, but that's not what I'm all about right now, is it? I'm just trying to show you so many things so quickly. I've I've got the I've got the uh, the bead excitement going. I'm like, oh my god, a new idea! I've got to try it out, and I'm rushing without doing it as quick uh, as neatly as possible, but as quickly as possible instead. So I pull that through. There we go. And then now look, if I just cut this little excess wire off. I could probably actually, oh, I just cut it. I was going to say, I probably could have used that little uh, bit of wire to cover this hole with a bead because the three mil bead would probably sit beautifully just over the top there like that and cover the hole. Oh, man, wasted opportunity. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's uh, There's that little piece just there that you can see. If we just kept attaching them, it would make for a really fun little piece. So I just connect those two as well. And there you go. You'll see. There you go. Oh, even, uh, who was that? Amber just says, uh, it looks like the, an, an, uh, look like an eye when they're together. Well, now it looks like, it almost looks like a, a fancy pair of, of glasses, doesn't it? If I, uh, wait. Here we go. I'm off to the theatre. See what's going on over here. Ah, oh, I should have connected it. There you go. I've got my glasses. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does look a bit like an eye. Apologies for that. I've no idea what I was doing. But it's always fun. We've got to keep. We've got to keep things fun, don't we? We can't. We can't. Imagine if I was just. And then you take your wire, 
and you wrap it through the hole. It would be really boring. So hopefully, hopefully, even though it's a little bit silly and a little bit crazy and I get a little overexcited sometimes, hopefully you're finding it fun to watch. Anyway, now that I've got this piece like this, again, if you wrap those crystals onto the top, much like the earring idea, you could have this on the top, which would look super nice. Obviously, forget about this little piece. You could turn that into the top piece there, uh, just there to make it look really nice. You could do it on the bottom as well if you wanted to on the bottom. There it is just there. There it is as the base, which is what Jermaine did earlier. I see you can see she was clever. She covered the hole uh, of hers. There's Jermaine's little earring piece, which... Wait, let's... There we go. So look at that. There's another little idea. And do you know, you could put something in the center of that. You could probably use a bit of your wire and go down through the middle and connect a little something just there. You could even probably, kind of like what we've done with, with this piece here, you could probably use a little finding like this in that same sort of way. What do you think? I don't know. There's some really nice ideas. I'll show you um, one of the, the lovely pieces as well that Jermaine's made. There's quite a few different ones. You can obviously do this with thread, but I've done this one here with tiger tail. So there's another little earring, which it uses. This is part of our, our little um, findings bundle, which I should show you. Oh, yeah. What a great idea. Jackie says, put a cat's eye bead in the middle. Yeah. Awesome idea. That's a really nice idea. Or you could even use like a... I wonder how the sizing of this fits. You could you could potentially do something like this, even. Wait, let me just show you. Uh, I've got a little shell bead here. No. Let's just pop this here. Sandy says, I love your silliness. Good, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm glad you uh, find my my craziness fun. So there you go. Look, you could you could put that in the center of it. How elegant would that look in a necklace? Oh my god. I almost want to... Do you know what? I am. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to see if I can fit this in here. Maybe let's go one of these. We have to make it the right width. So we're, we're, we're literally going on the cuff here. This, this, this could not... This might not work. So if we put that there, we need to make a gap... Need to fill this sort of a size. So maybe one, two, three, and a check glass. Plus one of these little gorgeous shell beads that I used from the Saint Tropez. Lucky I still had some of my Saint Tropez beads floating around. Just sort of pop that there. And then do the matching opposite side. So we'll go. Another one of these here. Couple of seed beads. One, two, three. Hopefully that's long enough. Yeah, there you go. That was a pretty decent guess on sizing. Like that. And now if I just take my wire through here, pull it through. There you go. Look at that. That'd sit nicely, I think. Just wrap around to lock that in place here. There you go. What do you think? What do you think about that? How does that look? That looks cool. See, look, that, that would make an awesome little necklace. And then if you had, like, these along the top... I don't know. You could just you could just keep sort of playing with it, designing with it, uh, seeing what you come up with, see what happens. You could you could even, if you wanted to, have something like this at the bottom, or I should show you Jermaine's other one because she's used. Here you go, ready? Those triangle, uh, triangle jump rings at the bottom of a of a head pin as well. So you could do that too, which I think makes for a really nice pendant piece, but I'm going to look at it as a concept. See, see, there it is. There's your, um, tell you, you wouldn't think this was a white t-shirt. There you go. 
See, there's that little concept. I know this style of jewellery is like mega popular at the moment. That's sort of why we've gone for this little finding, which if you haven't seen it, this is the ball chain. I should show you how to use this stuff, shouldn't I? Uh, ball chain's fantastic. Uh, it's a really, really useful little material. So if you wanted to, you can... You just attach your your little findings to the end of the ball chain. I showed this in a tutorial not too long ago, just a couple of weeks ago, I think. Or maybe it was in my... My, my, no, I, I don't know. I can't remember. I feel like I've done it just recently, but I'll show you it again anyway. So we can just connect to the end here. So if we, if we decided, yeah, I'm finished with, uh, with this little piece, this is how I want it to look. Um, you could just cut off your wire, which is what I'm going to do, which this is clearly a work in progress, but there you go. Look, that's, that's sitting really nicely, actually. Look at that. And it doesn't even spin either because it's nice and firm. Look at that. I feel so clever. Um, so yeah, I'll just cut this little bit of wire off. There we go. But yeah, with these little drops, there's there's so many like delicate things that you could do with these little beads. So hopefully they're up on available on the website now. I'm not sure if they are. If they are, I don't know, if, if you're watching Jermaine or Andrew, comment in and tell me if they're up on the website. Um, but here you go, look, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll even do that little thing I was suggesting just before, and I'll use some of my ball chain with that. Why not? Let's do this. Let's, let's get creative. And then, and, then, and then I think that might finish me off for today. So I guess you could even do... You can even do two from here. You can even use this as like a central piece and then it goes one off one way, one off the other and it becomes a necklace if you wanted to. That's a that's an idea. What do you think? This sort of thing here? Well, maybe with maybe with an extra little couple of beads or so in there it could have worked really nicely, but um if I thought about it a bit earlier. See, look, you could have this here and this here. Hey, look, now it's a pair of eyes and a mustache. Um there you go. You could you could really easily do things like this and continue up here, have them obviously have them the same, but you know continue like that or do them as earrings, whatever. But anyway, let's let's try this out. This could be this could be a, a bit of fun, I think. Um, I might do one to start with, so we will. I'll show you how to use the ball chain. I'll show you how to use the ball chain because I'm just thinking this is probably going to work really nicely if I do it this way. So if we grab some of the ball chain just here, I'll just cut it open. Or maybe I'll nick this piece just here. And what you could do, if you wanted to, is just create like a, a, a sort of... A, a waterfall with these things here, which could look super cool. So I'll get my cutters. If you haven't seen ball chain before, it's a fantastic little material. I'm going to do a tutorial on a similar thing in a few weeks time, but not, not yet. So anyway, just say, yeah, whatever, let's go. Let's make a small piece about this size. Cut that between, because if you have a look there, teeny weeny little balls. See that? Lots and lots of little balls. So as long as you cut between, uh, you'll it's it's super strong stuff. It's made of brass so you can see it's it's really really strong Like if I pull on it, you'll see I probably there you go. Look left a mark in my finger But it doesn't break. It's really really strong. So anyway, uh, let's do another one. That's just a little bit longer And then another one which is a little bit longer again This is gonna be another this is this is literally I'm coming up with this at this very moment for a bit of fun so if this doesn't work, just just be warned. It was it was it was all for fun, I promise. Uh, there we go. So make it a little bit longer again. Let's go this sort of length. So they're each just that little bit longer from the next to the next to the next. There we go. See, look. And now all we have to do is attach our little side collot, which again the finding is part of the bundle that you're going to get. So where are my side collots hiding? Here, little side collot. Here you go. Side collots. Plenty of them. There they are. So these are 
Ah, we've got Lorraine who's here as well. She says, hello everyone, I thought I would tune in and watch live. Glad to see you here. Thanks for joining us, Lorraine. She's over on uh, YouTube. No, she's on Facebook. She's on Facebook. Uh, so, yeah, with these little fellas here, I'll show you what they are and then I'll show you how they work. So I'll zoom in really close so that you can see. So if you have a quick little look just there, they are like two little cups with a loop on the top. So essentially in more macro version terms, it's like two little cups like this side by side. And they've got a loop at the top here and a loop at the top there. So we're going to go like this. We'll put the last ball of our ball chain inside the cup. They fit perfectly within one another, so it's really easy to get it in. And then I'm going to just fold it over to close that little last ball into the finding. So let's just zoom in. You can see they're absolutely itty bitty, these findings. So you'll want to use the bead mat. The bead mat is your friend. So pop it there on the table. Like I said, the balls fit exactly in, so you can just drop it in. And because it can't fit more than one ball, it just drops straight into that little gap perfectly. As long as you get it close, it will just drop in. And now you can just bring in your pliers, try and pop it there, and give it a gentle squeeze while it's sitting down, because obviously the, the bead mat's not shaking, it's not going anywhere. There we go, give that a squeeze, and now if I hold it up for you, you'll see just here at the end, we've got a perfect little gap there, a little hole, which if all goes to plan with my head pin, here we go, here comes the magic, the moment of truth. Is this going to work or have I made a boo-boo in thinking it might? Grab my head pin out, there we go, there it is. This should work. I'm confident. You ready? Come on now. Let's get in focus here. Is it going to go through? Yes! Look at that. So now, if I wanted to, I could just dangle this from that little gap. So let's pop the first one on. I'll do the next one, and I'll pop that one on too. They're super quick, super easy to make, so just pop that there. Give, whoops, let's get it slightly more in camera. Pop that there. And give this one a squeeze. Whoops, wrong button. Ah, there we are. Give this one here a squeeze. There we are, that's that one complete. We'll thread this onto our head pin. Come on, on you go. The good thing is the hole that these have is exactly the size for just like standard findings. So they should just, just needs to be squeezed a little bit more. Just align that nicely. There we go. It should, by all intents and purposes, thread onto your jump rings, thread onto your anything you like. So there you go, there's the next one. You can see one's long and one's short. We'll do the next one. You can just do like loads and loads and loads of these little things if you wanted to. But I'm only gonna do four for now. Squeeze them together, these little end pieces, to get them nicely aligned. There we go. So because this uh, head pin is pretty much the exact size of the hole, it's a little more difficult. Jump rings are definitely easier. But there we go, there's the next one. And I'll do one more. So you can imagine how quickly these come together. They make perfect little dangly pendanty bits. There we go. And just align this one as well. Ta-da! So now I'll use my round nose pliers. Um, here we go. I'll just create a little loop here. There we go. Oops. 
and I'll roll, 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 all the way over to make the first little loop, and I can just bend against it to make it the perfect shape for my bar. There we go. So there's that little head pin there. Let's pop that on to one side. This is this is literally I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, going going a bit off off track here. So hopefully this is this is going to look good. We'll see. I should have added some extra beads in there. Could have. Oh well, whatever. Doesn't matter. Pop that on there. And thread it on. Just get it nicely attached. There we are. Get it a little closer. There we are. There we go. Attached to one side. Just bring it around, and it only needs to be fairly small, but I reckon it would look better if you had more of these things or other things dangling, who knows. So I'll just now cut the little ball piece off. I'm not going to need all of this, so I'll just cut it around here somewhere. Obviously this would probably look better if it was more full, but, you know, whatever. See how it goes. In fact, I'll make it even shorter. Let's cut off even more. Try not to get these bits to fall to, to go anywhere. There we go. And I'll just make it with this little piece just here. Hold that there. My bead mat's becoming very messy, isn't it? And if I just pop this here. I want to make sure that I've got it in the same direction as the other one. So if I have a look, see this head pins this way. So I need to roll this one in the same direction so that it will become the same. All the way over. There we go. Give it a bit more of a turn even. Neaten that up. There we go. And now I can attach it to the opposite side. Maybe I've made this a bit small. Who knows? I probably could have put some beads on either end. I tell ya, if only I'd thought about that earlier. But hey, we're we're getting creative. We can try things. We can we can, you know, get creative. That's what we want to be doing, isn't it? So I'll just do that there. I'll open this little plier up, this little loop. Just get it in position. There we go. Open him up. Attach the opposite side. Close it up. There we are. And one finished little piece there. There we go. So obviously this would probably look cooler if it had more little pieces in the center. Wait, I'll hold it up as a single finding. Oh, have I... Ah, oh, I did too. I've attached them on opposite ways. So wait, I'll just open it back up. You can see it's not quite done the right way. I should have Attached, I've attached it from one side to the other and then the other side to the... You'll see. Wait. So I'll loop that off there. I'll bend my loop the other direction. So that it's the same in both sides. I should be using my normal pliers for this. There we go. And now it should hopefully... Yeah, that's going to sit much better now. Just bring that back in position. So there you go. That's an interesting thing to note. You want to make sure that the bar is on the same side. So if you have a look, my loop 
loops around from the front to the back and on the other one I'd done it so that it went from the back to the front so now they're both from the front to the back so that they will loop in the same way and if I hold that up that should sit quite nicely you might need to use two head pins to get it to stay in position and there you go whoops just pop that nicely in position maybe it was better before there we go perfect one little pendant how cool is that that's a really fun idea I'm glad I thought of that but there you go so you can see it's got these dangly bits in the center you could add beads here you could do whatever you want to that there and uh, that'll sit quite nicely as a, a really fun little pendant just there at the bottom I've got my my little head pin working as a, as a connector for this central piece what do you think about that that's that was that was quite fun i thought that was a good idea um but yeah wrap your wire onto it you can so yeah you can just to sort of recap what we've done you can attach head pins to do it like this you can use tiger tail to wet, to make infinite head pins really really long ones uh you can use your tiger tail as well to make ones where you've got like a drop section at the bottom uh, all of those are really really easy you can wrap wire onto the the rim there to make a really nice little earring design there or a bag charm or something like that you can use your triangle jump rings to attach little drops to make cute little pendanty bits you can do it as necklaces you can do it as bracelets you can do it as earrings there's uh, this little pendanty design here you can use it as like a, a necklacey piece the, apparently these crystals are now on the website so there's uh, three different color options to choose which are these three there we go so these three different colors there's midnight there's oh no maybe there's four there's four yeah so there's midnight which is this one here there is the peacock ice uh, this one is the misty green I think it's called and then we've got the clear AB uh, if you want to get those um, yeah here you go this is uh, another idea Lorraine says the findings would look nice with some Byzant Byzantine weave chain mail of course exactly there's there's like loads and loads of different things that you can try you can join them together as links for like a necklace you could do it as really long pendant if you want to uh, here we go crystals are on the website there we go perfect um yeah you can you can do them as little earrings you can hang things from them as well wrap to them like i have here you can even cover your little work uh your little holes there by wrapping around um of course there's other fantastic findings that you can use as well like for example you could probably uh put seed beads through from end to end to end to end like this if you wanted to just like that there one to the next now the my other finding here no where have you gone I had another I had another little one ah oh, here it is yeah you can use your tiger tail to create loops so you could even do that on the bottom of this too like that how nice would that look actually if we did that on here so see how there's this one here you could have a small loop in the section you could you could even do this very same thing but you have one there and then one small loop a bigger loop and a bigger loop so you could have three loops you could do the same as this but have three loops and that would make for a really cool pendant as well that's a that's another fun little idea which of course if you're going to get our bundle i'll just show you very quickly over on the website we haven't even looked at that so today's tutorial is right here so if you miss the beginning or anything if you click the big button where i'm looking puzzled uh there confused about that finding uh click on that and it will take you to where this video is otherwise the link in the description there's a little um thing there about how to uh how to view today's products view all of the things that i've got uh that i'm using it's the same as clicking this big purple button that says view all related products so if you click on that it will take you to where you can get the three mil fire polish super bundle which i'll show you it once more it's got lots and lots of beautiful three mil fire polish beads in uh, there's 20 different strands to choose from so that for example 
looks like here's an an example of one uh come on now there we go uh yeah you can see there's loads and loads of really gorgeous high quality beads they've got a b surfaces on them you, we've got mixes uh these ones here are the ones that i was demonstrating with as well uh, there's blue we're gonna give you like a whole rainbow we're not gonna just give you junk we're gonna give you really really nice colors we've got 130 different colors 170 170 different colors uh so we're gonna make them all mix and match and assorted so if you get more than one you can do um i'll show you if you want to on the website say actually i want two or even three of them uh when you click add to basket that means you'll get three different bundles because they are going to be assorted they're going to be different they're not all going to just be the same so um just do that if you're going to get multiples you'll get multiple different ones um not just the same ones again and again and again um also if you want to get our little findings bundle it's this one just here if you click on that you can have a look it shows you obviously you've got your necklace bib connectors which i've been using instead of 250 they're only two pounds in here uh you get those those diamond chandeliers you get those little love heart chandeliers as well um you've got some ball chain you've got lobster clasps ball chain clasps you've got flat silver closed rings which you could make tassels from uh you've got the triangle jump rings you've got four mil jump rings you've got earring posts all of this is 20 percent off you can see uh two mil crimps you've got three mil crimp covers you've got the two mil silver side collots you've got head pins as well you've got four mil wire and you've got tiger tail but if you're thinking do you know what i want to get more of those little necklace bibs click the button and just add that see that little plus there click it you can get two of them you can say actually i want some extra ball chain i want some extra chandeliers add to it you don't have to have just one of each you can add more and you get the discount on each of those items again and again so if you want more head pins do that if you want more wire or more tiger tail and you get those same savings every single time so yeah there's that we've got the crystals here there's the clear ab one uh doesn't look quite as clear ab as as it should but doesn't matter still looks very very lovely um why is this one white and the rest aren't so there's that misty green one there's the midnight one and here's the peacock ice which i'll show you them uh there's more findings and ball chain and stuff down here as well if you just want to get a few of those little bits that we've got they're all just here on this page but otherwise um i'll show you those crystals if you want to get them of course get the um the the three mil check glass as well but these are what those crystals look like in the flesh uh just here i think we've only just got the the pictures up very very uh quickly i don't think they've been white whitened yet so that they're all on a nice white background so you can really see what the colors look like but here they all are uh they look absolutely gorgeous they're stunning so this one's the peacock ice there's your clear ab lovely crystal clear uh the misty green one as well and then there's your your midnight which has this beautiful sort of greeny tealy color in there as well so yeah that's pretty much it from me today um hopefully you've had lots of fun watching that one uh i know we, we went on for a while wow we've almost been an hour and 45 minutes it seems um if you haven't done so already uh make sure you jump onto our facebook group um the link is down there in the description you can join our facebook group there's always lots of fun going on uh on there so be sure to to join it it's 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 a, a very good place it's it's already got over a thousand uh people have joined our facebook group so that's that's super cool really really quick um but yeah the the it's a a, a lot going on we're running competitions there's some going to be some really good things going on in um in in august on there as well uh, of course if you haven't done so before uh make sure you sign up for our newsletter that's the best way to find out what is coming and when uh we usually have uh here we go uh, we give you a five pound voucher to try out some of our beading patterns in there there's loads and loads of goodies that we always have going on but yeah so make sure you like this video share it subscribe let's see who we've still got here 
Uh, Sandy's still here. She said, uh, thank you for all the wonderful design ideas. I had lots of fun. Good. I'm glad. Um, the There was another person who said that they... Uh, here we go. Yeah, Nancy. She also said some really clever ideas. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, there's... Uh, hopefully you've had lots of fun. Thea is here. She says, thank you. I'm glad you've enjoyed the uh, the tutorial, Thea. Thank you for, for joining us uh, with today as well. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I'm going to head off now. I'm going to be enjoying my weekend. I've got some more videos to record because we're bringing out more things all the time on our YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, if, you, if you've if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure you hit that subscribe button, um, like this video, be sure to share it as well. If you want to get any of our savings, for example, uh, I don't have the Santa Pay jewelry with me, but that's still on sale. In fact, I will show it to you very, very quickly over on the website because it was very, very popular and lots of people bought that one. So uh, if you've missed it, you'll want to know about it. It's um, if we have a little look on the website. So if you go over to our website, if you missed last week's tutorial from the, the home page, uh, you can see in the top corner, if I just get it showing, here we go, just here, so next to where it says earring, bracelet, right there in the top corner, underneath previous shows, it says Saint-Tropez beaded necklace with the adjustable clasp. Clip on that. It will take you to where you can watch the video, but also if you scroll down a little bit further, you can find all the related products. You can get our pattern. But if you want to get the pattern for free, all 122 patterns, you can get them for free still. So check out that little necklace there. Uh, you can get all three for £36. So that is 20% saving. And you also get this little 120 pattern pack completely for free. So that's all three of the, the, the coral sea, the sea glass blue, and the sand and sun teal color. That was last week's. If you're going to get that one, um, you've got until Sunday. Uh, plus, you can see all the different products that we use. That was last Friday's video. So if you're going to get that one, um, do definitely check that out. But that's straight from the homepage, just there, if you want to get that. You can see all of our videos and stuff um, from the menu as well on, on our homepage. But yeah, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope you've had lots of fun on today's tutorial. I'm off now and i hope you have a lovely weekend um i've got some formula one to watch this evening uh by the way if you've just uh if you've just missed out on the tutorial like joanne she said oh i missed it again you can watch it just head to the home page and you can and you can watch that tutorial but yeah thanks everybody for joining me i'll see you all next time have a lovely weekend bye bye